It's time to take your seat in the front row with Mike Vaccaro. Here's your host, Mike Vaccaro. Thank you, Chuck, and welcome everybody in the front row with Mike Vaccaro. I am your host, Mike Vaccaro. As always, behind the scenes, it's JR Quitman, our creator, producer, and director. Episode number 16 now here today, and it's UCLA Athletic Director Martin Jarman. We dive into our UNCW roots here as he played for the Seahawks, was on the first championship team for UNCW, and then went on to athletic administration, stops at Michigan State, Ohio State, athletic director at Boston College, and now at UCLA. He tells us all about that as his journey began in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Our guest, episode number 16, UCLA Athletic Director Martin Jarman. Well, Martin, I know you're a busy man, a lot going on in college athletics these days, so uh, we greatly appreciate you spending some time with us here today. We want to dive into you uh, during the time we have you and, and talk about your journey. And for you, it started in North Carolina and started in Fayetteville, North Carolina. What can you tell us about growing up? You were born in 1979, so... Early oh, Mike, don't tell me, don't tell, don't start off with the age, Mike. Well, I'm, I'm older than you. I'm older than you. You're, you're still a young guy to be a, certainly a, a power five athletic director at 42 years old. And you've been that for, for a number of years, but uh, again, mid eighties, late eighties, what was life like for you and, and where were athletics in your life at that time? Life was great. You know, I had uh, two wonderful parents, um, uh, Matt Virginia Jarman and uh, older brother Trey and uh, you know sports was always a part of our household you know uh, we always played sports my dad coached coached us in football and basketball and baseball so um, and uh, my mom was always so nervous at the games that she would have to like not look or walk away or something but you know sports was always at the uh, at the core of, of everything we did and, and just the lessons that you learn from sport teamwork uh, selflessness grit toughness um, and resilience because you know you're not always successful so um, you know life was good we we had a loving home and uh, Fayetteville was was good you know I I, I, uh, I have a lot of fond memories of Fayetteville I haven't been back in a while because uh, my dad lives in Raleigh now but uh, but no it was good times it was definitely good times you mentioned several sports there football basketball baseball eventually you played <clears throat> basketball in college was that your best sport or were there other ones that, that you thought were a little bit better, but you know, again, maybe that opportunity presented itself in basketball. You know, I think basketball was just the one that, that I worked hardest at, you know, that's something that's the one I enjoyed the most. Probably I played baseball too, but I, I think uh, basketball was the one that I, that I loved. And so uh, I was fortunate to, uh, to go to UNCW and get that opportunity and, and play there. And, and we had some great moments and coach Jerry Wainwright, uh, He's uh, he's the best, you know. He's he's been in my life ever since then, and uh, continues to be. So, uh, I'm grateful and thankful for that opportunity at UNCW and, and being around my guys and my teammates, um, great people, great guys, and uh, it, it was a formidable, formidable, uh, transformable in, in experience for me. How did that happen? How did you find your way to UNCW? Obviously not too far from Fayetteville, but but why was that a fit for you? And and obviously it paid off well for you. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's just, um, I always felt comfortable at UNCW. And, uh, you know, when I was looking at schools, it was one of those things where, um, you know, you gotta go where you feel comfortable. And I actually was was thinking about going somewhere else and and um, had, had spent some time at that campus. and came home after a week and told my parents like, no, you know, I, I can't do it. And uh, thankfully Wilmington was still there as an opportunity and, um, and the rest is history, you know, just had a great experience being a Seahawk and just the people at, at UNCW are just great people, really kind, welcoming and uh, nurturing. And that's what you want when you're a 17 year old kid from Fayetteville, North Carolina, you want people to, to help you grow and learn and develop and, uh, and hang with you. And that's what UNCW did. Yeah, 1997 to 2001, you were a guard on the basketball team and a, and a two-time captain as well for Jerry Wainwright. You know, you weren't the star of the team, but still to be a captain on that team, what did that tell you about you? And 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 was that kind of a sign of things to come, being a leader uh, at such a young age? You know, I just tried to help where I could. And obviously my talent and skill level was was not going to be the thing that that helped propel us to, to new heights. But I, I realized that uh, you know, any team you need someone or someone's to help you bring it together. And I was the guy that really 
uh, just could relate to everybody and connect everybody and, and uh, just try to do what I could to help the team, you know, and, and help us get better each and every day. You know, part of that is, is just showing up, you know, 90% of it showing up and uh, doing the work. And, uh, oh, my God, those pictures. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, man, those are the days. But, but yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to help my team in, in whatever way I could. And, uh, you know, that was, that was my role. And I think, um, you know, part of being successful is knowing your role, embracing your role, and doing the best that you can in that role and uh, not try to be th- something that you're not. And so that's that's really what I tried to do. And, and uh, you know, we had a we had a good run getting to the tournament for the first time in school history. And it's something that uh, I'll never forget. Yeah, I've been around here now as the voice of the Seahawks for 18 years, been a, a chance to, to call a couple of those championships. And, and and this community certainly gravitates to this team where they're winning as they did. And, and as you said, 2000, the very first championship. What was that like here in Wilmington? It's still a very young university, UNCW and, and young program. But to be the first one to do it, it had to be just a wild scene around here in Wilmington. It was. You know, that's the one thing. There's only one first, right? You know, you, there's only one first. So the beauty of that is you you experience it. And for that community and for Wilmington, I remember driving back uh, on the bus from Richmond. And when we got back just on, I want to say it's, it's um, College Road, you know, coming in on College Road. And just there were cars and fans lined up, just honk, uh, honking their horns and people just celebrating. And to bring that kind of joy to a community uh, when you're, you know, a young kid in college, it, it was just phenomenal. And just the support that the community had for that basketball program, it was it was incredible. You know, it's one of those moments that you'll always remember. It's uh, it's something that. Um, you know, I know my teammates now, we, we think of fondly, we still communicate. And uh, it was just cool to see Wilmington like that, you know, and it, and it kind of showed you the possibility when you do something the first time, you taste it, you know, you want to do it again. And, and certainly enough, they did that a few times after. And, and it was great to be the foundation and, and start uh, that process of getting to the NCAA tournament. I'm sure it's tough to kind of keep up with all those guys, your former teammates, but you did have a reunion here a couple of years ago back on campus. What was it like to to get back, what was it, 20 years after after winning that championship and see guys like Brett Blizzard and Stuart here and and obviously Danny Dahl as well? Dahl ball, Blizzio, yeah, man, those guys, uh, and Greeno, man, those guys are, it was great. It was great to see everybody. Uh, you know, it was one of those moments where, you know, you get together that Friday night and then all the lies start being told, man. It was just all the lies, you know, and, and, and uh, it was like we were back in the locker room again. And uh, it was just great. I'm, I'm so thankful that a lot of the guys are still in good health and around to where they could come back. And, you know, because that's what it's about. It's about the relationships you form. And uh, it was it was just good to be back and good to be with the guys. But. Uh, it was incredible. You know, that's what you that's what you want in a team is you want lifelong bonds and memories with your brothers. And and I, I, I would call them uh, my brothers. And, and I think that we had a, a special a special bond, a special moment in time. And, and um, it was great being back there 20 years later, which is crazy. It's crazy. And you touched on Jerry Wainwright as well. As you said, you, you still keep up with him to this day. How much of a mentor was he, and, and how did he help you get to, to your, your current vocation and what you're doing now? You know, the first thing that Coach did, and a lot of us, is believed in us. You know, you, you, you can't see it unless you believe it. And he was very instrumental in helping me believe in uh, my abilities and, and that I could do more and give more than what I, was, what I thought I was capable of. So just believing in me was huge. And, and also, too, you know, the life lessons that you learn from, from coach, you know, um, it's so funny, so many stories that everybody I'm sure has, but, you know, I can remember we would run on the track uh, at five, five in the morning, five thirty in the morning, and we'd have three mile time runs and, you know, you'd have to get out there and, and, you know, you don't want to, and no one who, who wants to do that. Right. And he would say, you know, you think this is hard, try having a family and you've got the graveyard shift and, and having to do something, um, at, at all time kinds of time in the in middle of the night, you know, and, and, and you have to do it because you've got to support a family. And at the time, you, you know, it doesn't resonate. It's like, oh, coach, what are you talking about? But then 
what he was saying was, this isn't hard. You think this is hard, that's hard. You're gonna go through life and really have hard things. And because you faced hard things, you got through them, it's gonna make you stronger. And so, you know, those lessons in life that he instilled in us, you maybe didn't grasp it then, but you certainly grasp it now. And we still, you know, at least for me, I still, I still uh, think about those things and say, you know, you're going through something like, this ain't hard. And I remember coach saying, you know, this is hard. Like what you got going, it's not as hard or difficult as you think it is, but he was great. He was great. He's a great leader, great man. And, and I'm still in touch with him as he is with a lot of his former guys. He loved us and, and uh, we'll always love coach. Yeah, certainly had a great impression on you. At, at what point, all right, you're, you're getting close to the end of your playing career, your college career. What were you thinking? Were you thinking an athletic administration at that point was going to be, you know, where you were going with your future? No, you know, I, I like college. I like college campus. You know, I like having the professors uh, playing cards in the Hawks and ass. It just seemed like it was cool just to, just to work on a college campus. And, uh, and the coaching staff at the time, uh, Rodney Terry, Brad Brownell, Mike Capasio, and, and Coach Wainwright, they all helped me with, um, you know, MJ, you should think about a career in, in, in college, you know. And uh, so it helped me get a scholarship from the NCAA, and that's how I was able to go to grad school. And, and um, you know, I still didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to be on a college campus, and I wanted to be around young people. I wanted to try to make a difference and I was a student athlete and I wanted to try to provide those same kind of positive experiences that helped me become who I was and continue to do. And, and so uh, that's kind of when I got the, uh, the thought and then I went to grad school at Ohio University and had a good run there and learned a lot and, and then uh, it was off to uh, Michigan State. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, your, your jobs, once you graduated, you went big. You're power five from the beginning, even though you started playing basketball at a so-called mid-major UNCW. You said Michigan State. So you're there 2003 to 2009, assistant athletic director for development. And one of the things you're, you were in charge of $1.2 billion a campaign for, for Michigan State. What did that experience teach you in seeing kind of the development side of athletics? But the Michigan State experience was great because I was I was a puppy, you know, I was I was young and it was my first real job out of school. And so I, I, I was afforded the opportunity to do things and grow, but also to make mistakes. And, and Michigan State was a great place to to learn from some of the best in the business. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a great time, a great community. And to be a part of the Big Ten, I wasn't as familiar with the Big Ten. Um, that was wonderful. But, you know, from a fundraising perspective, you know, it's all about connections, you know, and, and, and relating to people and connecting with people. And so that's what I learned uh, primarily at Michigan State was, um, you know, learning uh, how to connect with people, how to connect someone's passion with an opportunity to give and, and inspire and help young people. And so uh, Michigan State was a great opportunity to do that. And, and I had a great time. I was there. What, I was there longer than what I thought I would be. You know, he was a kid from North Carolina. I remember that first winter in East Lansing, Michigan. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But I, I had a great run there of seven years, and uh, it was a great experience. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the transition weather-wise there, because uh, as you said, <laughs> East Lansing, Michigan is not, it's not the beach here in Wilmington. So maybe that was the biggest transition for you as well. Just toughen you up, man. It just toughens you up, you know. So, uh, but no, it was it was great. It was a great time, and and like I said, I learned a lot. And you know, you have to go uh, in situations and be uncomfortable. And that was that was me for a while there, and and have the ability to make mistakes and learn and grow and and develop. And so, that was uh, that was great for me. So you're there until 2009. Your next step, still the Big Ten at Ohio State. What is you know. It, you, you hear about the rivalries in the Big Ten. Was that difficult to go from Michigan State to Ohio State and kind of have people there see you as a now a Buckeye and not a Spartan? No, not at all. Not at all. Because, you know, in the Big Ten, everybody is very, um, you know, your colleagues and, and you get to know people. So it, it wasn't that. It was, a, it was an opportunity for growth for me at the time in my career. And, um, you know, it was, it was one of those things where whenever you have a chance to go work for a great leader, you got to take advantage of it. And Gene Smith, the athletic director there, he's still there now. Um, you know, he's one of the top, if not the top athletic director in the country. And uh, the, the, have the opportunity to work 
at Ohio State, which uh, is a great program, along with a, a guy like Gene Smith that I could learn and grow and serve and help, is um, was it just a tremendous opportunity. Not everybody gets that chance. So um, it wasn't hard at all to make that transition. And, um, you know, it was always hard on, on certain game days when you would play Michigan State. But um, it, was, it was a great experience. And I really learned, you know, just success, you know, what goes into success and winning and detail and accountability and just some things that really help you um, identify with how you how you create how you go about um, having a successful organization and that's what Ohio State I learned a lot about that yeah assistant athletic director deputy athletic director during your time there so that was a chance for you to continue to move up did you did you go there kind of with that in mind okay this is maybe the next step I need if I want to become an athletic director myself and run my own department you know, Mike, not not really. Um, at the time, I didn't know I wanted to be an athletic director. I've always taken things one step at a time. I, I just try to be great in the role that I'm in, and that's 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 just how I feel. I think you got to be where your feet are. And so, when at Ohio State, it was just trying to be the best I could be. Try to learn as much. Always know that um, nothing is permanent. So, whatever opportunity you're in, you wanna you wanna do your best to to grow and to learn and and get better. And for me, it was just always about getting better and how do I serve. And uh, we had some great student athletes there that I, that I got to know and uh, great coaches and staff that I got to work with at Ohio State. So um, at the time, I, I, I didn't know I wanted to be an athletic director. That came, that came later in my years at Ohio State. You know, the longer I was there, the more I, I got comfortable with the idea of, of leading at that level, you know, and what it might take and, and just the interest of, you know what, I think I might be able to do this. And, and, it, and that turns into, I think I can, I want to do this. So um, that was that was kind of the, the, the growth, the period for me at Ohio State. And, and during that time, you're a fundraiser as well with Ohio State. And as you said, it's relationships when you talk to donors and, and see how they can affect student athletes. Did it help that you, your message is coming from a former student athlete that maybe benefited your time at UNCW from donors and, and what they did for the program here. Did that help in your message and trying to build that relationship uh, with folks wherever you went, Michigan State and then Ohio State as well? Absolutely. You know, you're only a product of your experiences. And so my experience as a student athlete helped me be able to to relate one to our student athletes at the time, but also with people that maybe didn't have that experience. How do I help um, give them insight into what students athletes need to be successful and how critical and important they are from a funding perspective from a support perspective to really help young people achieve their goals and become the best version of themselves so my experience as a student athlete definitely helped in a number of ways one you can relate but two there's some things that you've got to do that you that you learn being on a team you know that that resiliency that that connectivity being able to communicate a vision um, and connect people with from their passion to to something that uh, is a mission or a goal with the organization. So all those things really help. And, and the foundation really was was the teamwork and just being a student athlete and understanding that experience. And how do I how do I translate that to help young people be successful? No way to have too much time, more time with you, but I do want to touch and, and dive into your time as an athletic director, which started at Boston College, uh, 2017 to 2020. And in the 37 years old at the time, the youngest athletic director on a power five level. Did you, did you think about that when, when you took that role and did it overwhelm you at all? Or, or, or did, were you feeling good and, and feeling like you got this, you, you knew what you were doing once you took over at Boston college? No, you know, I didn't think about it that much, quite honestly. It's uh, I've always had a, a confidence in myself. I, I bet on myself. I believe in myself and, you know, Boston college, gave me an opportunity you know it was it was one of those situations where i never envisioned um you know a guy that grew up southern baptist uh, going to a jesuit institution in boston and i'd never been to boston uh but it was a great fit for me it was a great fit for bc and and uh i i really grew as a person and as a leader you know it was um the the jesuit mission of men and women for others there is something that really resonated for me and i learned from you know it's, a, it's about service and at, at BC, you're around really, really good people, really talented people that that um, demonstrate that ethos of men and women for others. And that's that's what we do is we serve our student athletes. And 
our constituents. And uh, it was it was a great experience for me. I, I learned a lot uh, on the heights and um, no, it was it was I was ready and uh, I was able to grow and, and, and learn and, and do some things in my time there that were that were that I'm proud of. Yeah, there until 2020. And then you take over May 19th, 2020 at UCLA and oh, during a pandemic as well. So <laughs> what was that transition like? You go from Boston, you go to the West Coast for the first time in your career, and then you're dealing with this pandemic. And, you know, this isn't some little athletic department. This is probably one of the more prestigious athletic departments in the country. Mike, we don't have enough time to tell you what the transition was like. You know, anyone that took a new job during a pandemic can tell you it's just it was chaotic. Uh, you know, you're coming into an organization and we're not in person. And, you know, I think my first year I probably met uh, only about 30 people in a department. Um, you know, it was just just odd. But UCLA, I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable institution. Those four letters resonate around the world. And I, I want to make a difference. I want to make impact and serve student athletes. And we've got some talented, talented student athletes here. And um, UCLA is just, uh, like you said, it's, it's the number one public institution in the country. And uh, the work and research and service uh, that goes on here at UCLA, I mean, it's just tremendous. So I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate to get this opportunity to lead our athletics program and um, so far, so good. You know, we're still in this pandemic, unfortunately, and, and that kind of rears its head uh, often. But, uh, you know, where you are is, is about the people and we have great people here and, and we do the work every day and we show up. We talk about being elite, having an elite mindset and uh, that's energy, leadership, integrity, toughness and excellence. And that's what that mindset is every day that we try to embody uh, as we serve. Did you have a welcome to Westwood moment that kind of, okay, I'm at UCLA. I'm in charge of this athletic department. Did you have a moment like that that you can tell us about? You know, I, I had a couple moments like that, but I, I'll tell you one since, since we're, we're talking about basketball. Uh, I remember when I got the job, I got a, a video text message. And it was, I opened it and it was from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And it was like, Martin, I just want to welcome you to UCLA. I'm Kareem blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, and it was one of those things that I, I like share with my family. And, and it was like, it was surreal to have a message from Kareem uh, and just who he is and what he means, not just to basketball, but just to life. And he transcends basketball. That was the first UCLA, like, wow, you know, this is, this is an incredible place. And the people that have come through UCLA, uh, trailblazers and, and, and people that have done great things. It's uh, it's special being a Bruin. So um, that was that was that moment, getting that message from Kareem. It's like, wow, you know, that was cool. Kareem, but what about your moment? Did you, did you ever meet Bill Walton? I'm sure you did. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a moment you'll remember as the well? big fella. Oh, yeah. I had dinner. I had dinner with Bill uh, maybe three weeks ago. I had dinner with Bill. He's great. He's awesome. Uh, he's been super supportive. He loves UCLA. He loves the Pac-12. Um, Bill, Bill is great. You know, it's, it's, uh, he's got a lot of stories. And, you know, uh, it's fun always when I get to get to hang with, with Bill Walton. But he's been, he's been great. He's been supportive. And, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've sat with him a couple of times. Yeah, and you were there. The, the team goes all the way to the Final Four last year as well and doing some good things right now. And I know you've got to run, but, but I can't thank you enough for spending some time with us sharing your UNCW stories, obviously, for the folks here. But, uh, you know, the folks here are certainly rooting for you and seeing the great success that you're having, even though you're on the West Coast. And uh, they're continuing to root for you and, and, and certainly seeing you do great things, Martin. I, I can't thank you enough for spending a little time with us here today. Well, Mike, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the time. And, and uh, I, I always pull for the Seahawks. I root for it, even though I'm all the way here in L.A. Uh, just let everybody know, keep supporting the young men. And that basketball program is such a, 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 a pride point for Wilmington. And it's known nationally, um, you know, to get behind that program, that support that the community gives to the student athletes at UNCW is, is phenomenal. So please keep supporting the young men and young women that, that wear the teal. And, um, and I'll be rooting for you. You know, you got fans always here on the West Coast in L.A. Well, again, my thanks to Martin Jarman for spending some time with us here all the way from the West Coast. Certainly a busy time in college athletics. My thanks as well to Scott Markley and Victoria Foreman for helping arrange 
us uh, that sit down with Martin. And also thank you to UNCW Athletics and UCLA Athletics for some of the video that you saw during the podcast as well. So again, 16 in the books. More great guests to come. As always, we remind you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss another episode of In the Front Row. Thanks for joining us here today. We'll have more guests coming up. Stick with us. Again, it's In the Front Row with Mike Vaccaro. Have a great day, everybody.